there are a couple of seats up here. Um, I don't know how many of you have had a chance to go online or examine uh, the capital budget as it's been uh, uh, sent over to the council this week. The uh, main problem, which not only affects cycling but all aspects of, of what we're doing uh, in regards to the city, is basically there's no money. Um, we're in a very difficult position because of a combination of events. One is the amount of borrowing we've done in the last couple of years and also the constraints put on us by the state. Uh, overall what it means is this, uh, in the next three to five years, any income we should get in regards to uh, a change in shared revenues or increased taxes is going to go for debt service. Uh, it's all going for debt services. There's no question about that. Uh, the question is, will there be enough to continue to support the city operations? Uh, we're working on the operating budget now, and uh, what we're seeing is approximately an $8 million gap. Um, that $8 million gap would really be closer to $14 million, but there's already some decisions that I've made which from the long term are not sustainable. They are not sustainable. Um, and if we don't get relief within two years, the, the problem will only get worse. The Well, despite that, let me, let me tell you some of the things that, that are, are, are in the capital budget. Um, requests in all areas of transportation uh, were cut, not just in terms of bicycling and pedestrians, but also in terms of road reconstruction. What has survived uh, and actually the, the amount of funding uh, regarding pedestrians and bicycles for 2012 is very close to what was uh, implemented for this year, 2011. There'll be a half a million dollars for, for basic bicycle uh, programming, which mostly is devoted to repair of existing bicycle paths uh, with priority uh, bank, bank based on the condition of the pavement. Um, there's going to be $180,000 uh, for a project of paving the what's known as the Good Neighbor Trail. Uh, another trail which will get extensive work is the Capital City Trail where we're doing work from Buckeye Road to the interstate. Uh, that's, if I didn't mention, that's about 160000 not 180. Uh, the Starkweather East Branch at $100,000 um, uh, will, will be reflected in some work from Powers Avenue along State Highway 30. There'll be some lighting installed, installed on the Southwest Path, and there'll be a considerable amount of work as part of the Jug Handle Junction at Highway M. Um, part of the, the Ice Age path. Uh, finally, uh, the big item is we're still going to go ahead with the underpass near Spring Harbor uh, at University Avenue. It's a $700,000 project uh, which will allow people to get without interference from vehicles from, from one side to the other. I haven't gone over any of the items concerning pedestrians, but those are the ones that, that basically uh, focus on, on bicycling. The, the biggest challenge we're, we're going to have uh, next year is, is going to be maintenance. Uh, maintenance in all areas of the city will, will be in jeopardy. And what I'm particularly concerned about, and it's one area where I hope we don't let up, is in regards to safety. 
we've had attacks on, on bicyclists over the years on a number of the paths and some of that same activity has uh, occurred more frequently in pedestrian areas as well. It's, it's a rather disturbing pattern of behavior. Uh, to date, on these, these uh, attacks, one of which uh, was on a bicycle path where there was an 80-year-old man walking, um, what's so disturbing about them is that we've made 25 arrests in these kinds of attacks so far this summer. The 25 arrests, uh, the range of the assailants in age is from roughly 16 years to 25 years of age. Every single one of the assailants was black. And that points to another issue in our community, which is the overall question of our commitment to young people and to neighborhoods. The uh, quality of life, I think, has to be viewed in terms of, of what happens to the victims, but we also have to take a look at the assailants themselves. They range from young men who are fairly well educated, have bright futures, to some from very disturbed backgrounds in terms of uh, abuse in their families, abuse in their lives, and it is something that, that has to be a very high priority for our community. It's not been enjoyable working on, on this budget, but I think what, what I'm trying to highlight is that we have to look at our community as a whole, in its entirety. We have to look at the possibilities that bicycling opens up in terms of recreation, in terms of sport, in terms of being a commuter alternative. But at the same time, we have to put it in the context of all the other problems and challenges that we have. One of the things that's been absent is a, a comprehensive plan, comprehensive transportation plan. Can we get the mic up so people who are further back can hear? Um, is that, is that, no, I think that went the other way. Paul's going to, oh, turn it on. One of the, uh, there we go. So, we're fine then. Uh, what, what I've saved for last is the question of, of planning. One thing that's in the capital budget that I didn't mention, which is new and different, is a three-quarter of a million dollar commitment for a comprehensive transportation plan for Madison. This is something that's long overdue. Every time we do a new development or every time we work on an isolated part of the community, we take the transportation function, we examine it, but we only examine it in the context of that immediate area. We have not had the capacity to date to do a comprehensive multimodal plan. And so, well, the question comes up, can you introduce new items, can you introduce new items into the budget? It seems to me that the need for a comprehensive transportation plan is really critical. And despite the problems we have in financing uh, other projects and other services, we're not going to do any justice to ourselves, to the land, and, and to existing transportation systems without an integrated transportation plan one that looks at land use planning as, as well as the various uh, modes that, that we face. I'm hoping that the council will approve uh, the capital budget and certainly uh, this element of it, the transportation plan. When, you know, I, I was asked to speak here on, on my vision. My vision is that we do proper transportation planning. 
And as part of that, we address the role for pedestrians, for bicyclists, for automobiles, for public transit. And I think that in another year, I can return and, and share with you more specifics on that because the plan really has to be one that's created by this community and by the people who move around it. There is one thing that I would like to see, and that is as we do development, we keep in mind the balance of where we work, where we play, and where we live. And that we bring all of that together so that we do not have growth and development on isolation. And so that people can have shopping within a convenient distance uh, to where they live. But the rest of the transportation plan and the function will obviously unfold in this, in this coming year. So thank you for the opportunity to share those thoughts with you. And um, I'm, I'm sorry if the folks outside couldn't, couldn't hear. Thank yeah, you. Mayor and panel, I'm not sure what to do about that, but we've got dozens and dozens.